Hey there, Downsview. Good to be able to connect with you again this way. It was uh, really disappointing that we couldn't get together this past weekend. I found myself really yearning to be back here with the people of God in the building rather than empty seats to look at, but to see your smiling and worshipful faces along with the church family here. And so I'm glad, you know, when the Lord affirms that we're designed to be together. I mean, the, the ecclesia speaks about the gathering of the saints. That, that, that word that speaks about the church in the Greek language means to be called out, but called together, to gather together. And with these uh, restrictions over the past couple of years, almost now, we have struggled with that. And I've, I've said before, I'm glad when any aspect of our Christian life is not going according to the direction of God, that it doesn't feel like it is that there's a, a, a frustration, a, a disappointment, a discouragement a, that leads to a longing to be doing it the way God would have us do things. Now, we've also said that in God's providence, we can't hate when he's doing something different than we've normally done. And that's been a terrific lesson for us during COVID, hasn't it? That there is so much of what we do that we just like it and prefer it and want it our way even when it's the right thing. But there are times like this that we've got to ask the Lord for patience as well as perseverance to persevere forward while we're patiently waiting for God to, well, restore us to this auditorium which should be full of the Lord's people again. Uh, the second thought this morning is to ask you if you've not done this, click on the subscribe button as you're watching this video. And the reason I ask you that is I hadn't thought about this for a while, but if we get 100 subscribers, then we can actually go live on YouTube, which expands our Sunday morning live stream options from just Facebook Live to YouTube Live. I know they're owned by the same company, but they're slightly different formats. And if we could have those options, I think that's going to expand the possibilities. So if you have not liked the page, please click like right below and click subscribe if you've not done that. You may have to uh, make yourself a subscription or an account uh, with YouTube to be able to do that so that it counts to our subscri subscribers. But uh, someone just clicked subscribe this past weekend and said, oh, we had a new subscriber. Like, I think that's 92. We only need 100. So if a number of you who are watching this would do that, just expand our, our possibilities. The third thing is, before we look at the word for a moment, is that today is the 4th of January, which means um, it's, it's day four, and there's still room for more. <laughs> Meaning that the opportunity for us to join together as God's people in reading through the Bible in one year is still there. I will put the link for the app that you can use, and you can use that on your phone or on your computer. Podbean is the name of where the, the app is. And you can have the New Testament and the Old Testament read to you over the next 300 and, what is that, 365 minus 4, 361 days, I guess, this year. And it's the kind of thing that can just be such an encouragement to our hearts to be filled with the Word of God its entirety over the next year and to do that in a way that would encourage us together to uh, be accountable for drinking in the word of God and will be equipping for us to be able to live in light of the word of God so that our lives could be all that much more worshipful towards God and his glory. And so consider doing that this morning. Just click on that link there and it'll download the app for you or you can just go to it each morning and either have it read to you or you can read the readings on their own. You know, one of the readings that uh, was actually from this morning is the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And it's a familiar word, but I want to just keep it in this light. Randy Alcorn, Bible teacher and commentator and, and pastor, has said before, following Christ dictates for our lives are, are not just the things that are the right things to do, but they're the smart things to do. The, the, the trusting Christ is, Christ is not just the right thing, it's the smart thing. That there's, there's logic and wisdom and, and 
encouragement for us to live in a way that's best for us, that's not just sort of generically uh, correct, but it's actually smart. And that's the logic that Jesus uses as he presents this issue of worry and anxiety. Who hasn't been feeling some of that and who isn't feeling some of that today with new restrictions coming in place tomorrow? Not affecting our, our churches and we're grateful for that and uh, praise God for his, his providence that way. But, you know, I, I feel for the restaurateurs out there. I feel for the gym owners. I, I feel for the teachers and students who've all got to stay off for a few weeks and whether you agree with those restrictions or not that's how it is and that's what God has been pleased to do but in the midst of that kind of potential anxiety and worry Jesus comes to us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25 and tells us that doing this isn't just right it's smart I tell you do not be anxious about your life so that's that's a command don't worry and we all say, well, worry is a sign of caring about something. Worry is a sign that something matters to us. That might be the truth, but sinning in light of caring about something is not the same thing. <laughs> it is not the understandable thing, or certainly not the recommended thing, even though it might make sense to us in some ways. So let's, let's bring our lives to the diagnostic of Scripture here. He says, don't be anxious about your life. For instance, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Do you see how that's smart? It's logical. But Jesus didn't just say, don't do it. Here's why. Life's more than clothing, more than food, and the body's more than clothing. For instance, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you of not of more are you not of more value? than they so number one he says look at creation look at how god takes care of it you're more valuable than what god's already taken care of would you not expect that god will take care of you that's the influence that's why it's smart to take jesus word to not be angry verse 27 says and which of you by being anxious or by worrying can add a single span to his life how does it help? Well, it helps to show that I really care about this situation and it's natural and, you know, other people will, will do it and people are, wait, no, let's knock it off, friends. Let's just look at the text. Which of you can be helped by worrying? To add a single span to your life, to add anything to this life that you're concerned about, that you're concerned about food and clothing, shelter, he says, look, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's smart to not be anxious. And why are you anxious about clothing? Verse 28 asks. Consider the lilies of the field. So you considered the birds for food, the lily of the fields for clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Let I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of Lee's. And so, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Won't he take care of you better than he takes care of something that is so temporary and so superfluous to life because it's just going to continue to grow? It's here one day, the next day it's tossed into the fire as often things that, that grow and grass and, and that kind of thing. He says, oh, you of little faith. You see what that means? He says, you don't believe me, Downsview. You think worrying is better. You don't believe me that it's not. You don't believe it's the smart thing. You don't believe it's the right thing. Oh, you of little faith. Which means we need to have more faith which means we need to believe Jesus and show that we believe him how we're living. Like this, therefore, verse 31, do not be anxious by saying what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear. Do you see what he's, he's suggesting there? Worrying is seen in what we say. Don't be anxious by saying these things. 
for the unbelieving Gentiles. That's what he means in verse 33, the Gentiles. He doesn't mean the, the Jews don't worry and the Gentiles do. He's, when referring in Gentiles, it's always meaning in these texts like this, particularly here on the Sermon on the Mount, that these are the, the unbelieving world. For the Gentiles seek after these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that you need, that your heavenly Father knows that you need, that your heavenly Father is able to provide for you, that he gives evidence of creation and he's going to do that for you. But seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't add to your difficulty by adding worry and anxiety to your struggle with food and clothing. Which, as Don Carson reminds us, 80 to 90 percent of a person's income in these days went into food and clothing. So we think it's no big deal in some ways in, in North America. We have lots of other things to worry about. This is what they were concerned with. This is why they worked. This is why they went to work each day, to food and clothe their family. God knows you need that. Don't add to the trouble, the worry about whether or not God's going to bring you through this trouble. Doesn't help. Doesn't help you at all. Doesn't add a moment to the span of your life. So trusting God, oh, you have little faith. No, let's be those who are of much faith, who recognize that it's not only the right thing, but it's the smart thing to do. Hit that subscribe button if you don't mind, friends, and download that one-year Bible reading app, and we'll continue in these days together. All right, friends, cheers.